Hello, everyone. It's Andrea Burns. Welcome to Stars in the House. I'm so excited to be here. Usually, you know, I come on Monday nights, but this week was special because we had the special birthday celebration for James Wesley on Monday, and Seth wanted to do a big surprise for him, for those of you who caught that fabulous show. And so I am doing Saturday night tonight. Saturday night on Broadway. So... Saturday Night on Broadway is such an important and special moment for those of us backstage, for those of us in the audience who are so excited to go to shows on Saturday nights. And for those of us who are backstage, it often, it's late in the week for us and we have to find a way to sort of recharge and get ready. And um, we pour a lot of energy into celebrating that it's Saturday night on Broadway. And the truth is there's nothing like it on earth. And it's time for us to remind ourselves what a privilege it is to be part of the musical theater and to be part of the legendary history of this incredible medium on Broadway. So we celebrate Saturday nights on Broadway. And sadly, it's been a few months since we've had an actual Saturday night on Broadway. So what we're doing here is lifting our, our fellow actors and artists and entertainers up with donations to the Actors Fund. As Seth and James have told you before, the Actors Fund of America donates and, and gives to any member of the entertainment industry. So this can be people who work backstage, voice teachers, um, anybody, costume designers, lighting designers, everybody is out of work right now. So many people are in need. And what you could do tonight by donating, you could be a superhero tonight, and your donation could mean somebody else's health insurance or somebody somebody being able to pay their rent and anybody who is working in the entertainment business you reach out to the actress fund tonight they will help you so I, I just put a call out to all my brothers and sisters who actually want to need help, please call the Actors Fund. And those of you who are missing Broadway like I am, please donate to our community and make a big difference tonight. Now getting onto the show, it's one that is very, very near and dear to my heart. Um, I've got family on tonight, sisters. Um, some of you may know me from a little show I did called In the Heights, where I owned a hair salon. And um, I'm very thrilled to invite tonight the ladies of the salon, Miss Janet DeCal and Karen Olivo. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited to see you guys. Thank you for having me. You're awesome. Thank you for being here. Okay, so rule one, which is this is very hard for Latin people. We cannot talk over each other in Zoom. This what is, do you mean? This is, <laughs> this, this is a this is a very just difficult um, medium. Zoom is Zoom has not figured its Latin uh, technology out yet because you have to be able to sort of jump in. But uh, we all can't talk once we talk at the same time. I think it mutes us all. So that's just an FYI. Meanwhile, thank you for being here, Karen. I see you are in your like little crafty paradise, and um, and Janet, you are home. You're not. You're moving into a new home soon, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yes. So you excited? You excited about that? Yes. So so excited. <laughs> um, Janet is engaged. Is that okay for me to say? Yes, it is. Yes. Too late. Yeah, <laughs> um, and uh, and we're very excited about that. Um, in the meantime, I thought we would all, obviously we have a lot of Heights fans watching tonight. And um, I do want to invite anybody who is watching who has a particular question for us to go ahead and send it and my producer will will uh, will find it and, and, uh, and, and put out the little comments so that we can answer. Also, going back to the Actors Fund and the donations, um, by the way, you can donate to the Actors Fund tonight by donating to Stars in the House 20, no, sorry, starsinthehouse.com is the donation. When you donate there, you will receive a receipt back, right? So when you get that receipt back, forward it to starsinthehouse2020 at gmail.com. It's right there, forward it back, and you might get a little shout out tonight from the ladies of the salon. So please make sure and do that. Okay, having gotten that over with, um, I wanted to ask, I not ask you guys, but I thought it might be fun to talk about how we all met and who got to the show first in the development of the show. So I think Janet has been with the show the longest. So when did you start out? When did you meet Lynn and how did you start out with the show? 
So I, uh, a, a dear friend of mine, Henry Gainza, who we all know and love, yeah. uh, he had, uh, we met in high school in Miami. He had left Miami to New York to start his career. And he uh, would tell me about this young guy uh, who was still in college at the time. This is back in the early 2000s. Some of you may have not been born yet. Um, so this is in the early 2000s. <laughs> and um, yeah, he was. He had heard of Lynn's musical out of college and uh, he was in New York at the time auditioning. And he told me about this incredible young uh, writer who was looking to put together a cast for his reading of his musical. And uh, <clears throat> I flew up to New York to audition, there was a there was a point in time there I would travel from Miami to New York. It was cheaper to live in Miami, fly up and audition than to actually live in New York and audition. So I did that for a while. And uh, the first audition I went on was for Lynn's reading of In the Heights. And that was back in 2002 in the basement of the drama bookshop. Legendary now. Yes, yeah, so I was lucky enough to be with the project basically throughout its entire uh, creative process. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. And I think I came in after you, Karen, did you and I come in together? No, no, I think I came in after you and a reading with Mandy, who by the way, was supposed to be joining us tonight. She is, um, she wasn't able to make it, but we're sending so much love to Mandy who is snuggled in with her family and we will definitely have her back. You know that I always have her on the show. So lots of love to you, Mandy, if you're watching. Um, so Mandy and I were part of a reading of the first act at Manhattan Theater Club, which I think was the only thing that you didn't do, Janet. That's right. Right? Yeah, that's well, right. We were introducing Daniela. I think that was the first time they had sort of written Daniela in, um, but you were not there. And then, um, and I did that reading and Mandy did that reading. And then later when they were getting uh, ready to do the, and then you did the O'Neill, Janet, which is the O'Neill Theater Center where they develop stuff like over the summer. And uh, I could not do it, but Janet did do it, kept missing each other. Uh, and I don't think Mandy did it. And then we get to auditioning for the workshop in New York in which they said, we loved you, but we really do need to see you come in and dance. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, they know me, like I do dance, but I'm, you know, a singer and a comedian, like it's going to be very chill. Actually, I think it may have even been billed to me. as like just a little simple session with the choreographer, no big deal. And <laughs> I get there and it's full dance call. Mm -hmm. And there was a gorgeous, striking young woman at that dance call. And that was none other than KO. Yes. No. Antonio Award winner, Karen Olivo. So we do have a thing where we sing, we sing all things to each other all the time. Yeah. So, um, okay, so Karen. I didn't know that that. I thought that when I saw you at that audition, I thought that that was your first time. I didn't know that you had already done a thing. Yeah. No. So that was like, that was a little weird for me because I was like, well, I thought I was already doing it. And now this was like a hardcore dance audition. And does it mean they're making it more of a dancing role? Am I still gonna be able to do this? I was a little like, what's happening? But I did it. Um, and yeah, and I, I remember like there was hip hop, hip -hop involved, which is, not necessarily what I'm known for, um, but uh, so tell us tell us about your experience at that audition, Karen. Uh, so I had heard a demo. Uh, my agent had gotten me a demo, and I was like, "What is this? I have to be a part of it." They got me an audition. And I was like, "I'm getting in this show. I don't know anything about it. I don't even know who I'm supposed to be auditioning for. I'm getting in." Um, and then, of course, it would have to be a dance call, which I'm known for being a great dancer. But no. you are. You actually have a Fred Astaire award. Well, yeah, but it's because I'm an I'm a no. I'm an actor. <laughs> right. Like, you act so well. We believe you're dancing. Anyway. Yeah. The face is working so hard that you never look at my feet and you don't know <laughs> that I'm dancing on the one the entire time. Like I'm you can't tell. Um, but so I walk into this audition and I'm like, oh my God, this is the like gig. I'm getting this gig. And then they were like, someone said, Andrea. And then they were like, Andrea Burns. And I was like, uh-uh, who, 
Andrea Burns, I know that name because I used to worship at the altar of Andrea Burns when I was at CCM because I was not afraid of anything. <laughs> we'll be so much. <laughs> Okay. Maybe it'll get better. It probably won't. It won't. It won't. The <laughs> point is not, not sing particularly well. That's kind of the game. But anyway, not that that wasn't gorgeous. Go on. No, no, no. no. Come on. Um, uh, so, yeah. So then I was like, what? Andrea Burns is in here. But then, of course, I'm like trying to get the gig. So I'm like, oh, I wanted to look around, but then I didn't want to like be like creepy and stalky. So I was like, let me just get the gig. And then. Um, <laughs> I see her at the end and I'm like geeking out and like, blah, blah, blah. I think we were at the elevator maybe. We were about to leave. And I was like, um, uh, you understand, I love you so much. And I'm freaking out because I didn't realize that she was a Latina. Like this whole time, like I thought she was like, I thought she looked like Kelly O'Hara. You know what I mean? Like I, I didn't look at the, I didn't look her up. It wasn't back in the day where you could just like look somebody up. Look pictures like, up, right? Right, I couldn't, I didn't even look at the, I didn't even have the, the, the CD cover. And it's a long story. My face is like blurred out on that CD cover anyway. So you were- I didn't know who you were. So then I like wigged out. Cause I was like, yo, I've been trying to sing like you forever. And I thought the reason I couldn't was because I just didn't have what you had. But now I might actually, like, it might be possible for me. So then I just, I lost my mind. I think I, did I freak you out? I freaked you out. No, I mean, no, it was actually an incredible moment. I mean, at first I was like, I can't really dance hip hop. I'm never getting this job that I really want. So I was in a kind of dark space when you were like, are you Andrea Burns? But. <laughs> But you know, I remember that, and actually, I will always remember that. I thought that was an incredible thing to learn that you had no idea that I was Latina, and that you felt like at one point you were like, I didn't think I was like allowed to sing those songs or something like that. Oh, for sure. And you were saying, and when in fact, I'm more connected to you than you know anyone else that I've seen singing these songs. Um, I just found that to be quite beautiful and really powerful. So I, I, I'll always remember that. Um, so then we all went into, oh, Eliseo Roman is watching. So this is important, okay? Because we build the show as the core four show. And core four was uh, the three of us and Mandy Gonzalez who were, you know, joined at the hip, the core four, but uh, we became very close very quickly to Eliseo Roman, who just sent his little thing, look at him. And uh, we renamed ourselves the core four plus one. And uh, you will down the line I, on another Monday for sure, I will have the whole core four plus one here, but I'm so happy you're watching. We love you. Eliseo Roman, of course, is the Piragua guy, the golden voiced Piragua guy from In the Heights. So, um, okay, so amazing. So then we all did the workshop. Mm -hmm. And um, you know what I also remember is a particular, particularly cool day in the workshop where we had a potluck. Yeah. <laughs> and we were all, it was very cool to have so many different Latin people in the company. And so we all had to kind of bring the food of our people. And I think that was the first time I tasted mofongo and it was, and you brought it, which is so delicious. Can you describe what that is, Karen? Yeah, it's uh, plantains that are mashed. Uh, and then you like, you do like a green, it's green plantains that are mashed. I think it's, um, and then you do like an onion that's like cooked in butter with like a little bit of vinegar that you put over top of it. A lot of people do like meat, but you know, sometimes. So good. It's just like the best mashed potatoes you've ever had. Correct. Like seasoned perfectly and like there's a crunch of an onion and you could die in them. Yes. But but they have to roll you away. Once yes. And then, but then you like, yeah, you're done. It's like starch on top of starch on top of starch. You're dead. Yeah. So good. Um, so that's such a happy memory I have. But um, something about, I was thinking about this show and a lot of the memories that we have as the core for um, backstage, or actually as the ladies of the salon in the salon, while other scenes were going on and uh, and what that experience was like. Janet, would you like to talk about that? Party con pay. Yeah. Can you explain? That's not, actually, I, you made that one up, right? Because at one point we loved being in the show so much that Janet said, 
this is party con pay, which essentially means you're paying us to have a party every night. Right. How, so could, this, how could this be a job? <laughs> it's not a job, it's a party con pay. Right. A party with pay is essentially the translation. Yes. And so, yeah, describe describe why that was so, particularly in the salon, I would say. Yes. Where else on stage? Our little haven of the salon is just, it's, it was a joy box. You know, we would go in there and literally have the best time of our lives. Uh, just laughing and connecting and being so present. And I'm like, how our job is to have fun. It was incredible. It was also um, small. Remember? It was like it was like you had to like in you had to like inhale so that somebody could get past you. Yes. <laughs> like downtown. Wasn't it like the smallest, like it was like a postage stamp? And yeah. then we had a chair and we had like all this hair brushes and stuff we had to use and props. So like everything had to be some, some like orchestration had to be done. You couldn't go through the door. Somebody was coming at you. Right. It was, it was deep back there. And we were all mostly on set the whole time um, because right, we were just those sort of like this living block around the bodega. So whenever the, you know, some of the narrative, the storyline was going on um, with either Lynn and Robin or Chris and Mandy, we'd be there in our little salon, actually keeping ourselves busy. And um, Janet and I had a really good, Janet, Janet did the nails. And um, I, know, I know Nina Lafarga's nails like nobody's business. This finger has a crack. It's a, <laughs> And it doesn't, it doesn't ever grow out. It's an ongoing crack. Wow. And Rosie Lani's Fiedelman's toes are the most perfectly shaped round <laughs> toes. Because they got manicures and pedicures every night from you. Yes. Yeah, I definitely was filing and cleaning up people's situations <laughs> every night. It was the real thing. There was, a, there was some tweezing going on is all I'm gonna say. And yes. in 96,000, I actually tweezed Janet's eyebrows like in time. <laughs> 96,000. Like, like, and the chin hair? Oh, that's right. <laughs> You'd be like, get this one. Get the chin hair. Yeah. Wait, it was what, ridiculous. When was the time? What was the part of the show where Lynn would throw the note through the salon window? We had like an adjoining little wall that should have been a wall, but it wasn't a wall. And he would throw something. But what part of the show was that? I was trying to think about that the other day. You know, Janet. Yeah, wasn't it during 96,000? No, because we would get back there and read it. Right. We would be reading it. But it had to be early in the show. He'd send it to us. We'd respond. And then and we'd send, send it, back. it back. Maybe. Did it we send it long now? I feel like we sent it back during Paciencia y Fe. No, I can't remember. It couldn't be into my favorite because I feel like I was getting my co I was changing. Okay. No, no maybe I wasn't. Definitely, it was definitely early in the show. And it started with like the kind of notes you get in elementary school, you know, I like you. Do you like me? Check one. You know, it started like that. But then of course they got very witty and very brilliant and um were hilarious and and we loved it. And then we we would either check a box, but then we'd write like another would he answer on the end? And it was all about the one-upmanship and then the chance where we could he could look back at us like, I read your note. I saw what you, I saw what you did there. There was a lot of that in eye contact that was going on during the show. Um, but we have a question. Could you tell on how early this, how special this show was? Did it feel different than other shows? Could you tell early on? Ladies? Yeah, I mean, I would have to say, like, from the mo first moment you walk into a room and you hear this music, you know that there is something very special about. That was like the big uh, sort of. It was like so, like a punch in your gut. It's like this is this is so special and so different. And I mean, you just hear the chord progressions and the melodies, and you're like, this is unlike anything I've heard before. And then on top of that, the story and the characters. It was it was always something that was very easy to clock as something different and special. And, you know, it's Lynn's heart poured into this music. So it's like, this is him, you know? Yeah. Um, I, yeah, go, go, go. I remember like Pilo telling us one time downstairs about um, like how 
in chorus line, they didn't realize, like, sometimes you don't realize how big something is, like how important the thing that you're doing is. And she, I remember she used to be like, you know, really pay attention to this time, like really like try to soak it all in. And it was, I feel like it was evident, like on a personal level that this was going to be like a pivotal moment in my life based on the people that I was around. Like this show was also another thing that sort of added on to it. Like I didn't know I was going to make some of my life friends in that, that moment. But once I did, I was like, Oh, these are like, gonna, these are people I'm going to know for the rest of my life. But then the show on top of it. So it was like, but I remember her saying that and being like, yo, I'm so glad she said that because that's kind of what it feels like. This feels like this is not another show. This doesn't feel like the thing that you just like sign up to do and you get a paycheck. And she was totally right. I mean, look at us here now, looking better than ever, might I add. <laughs> um, but like, it is. it was pivotal for us. It was like, it was huge. I have a distinct memory of you, Karen, in particular. Um, right before we went on for the workshop, which was really the first time, the workshop was essentially a full on performance um, with sets and costumes and everything. And it was in the theater that ultimately we'd be playing in in 37 Arts. And so the people coming to see the workshop was a full audience. And so we were backstage circling up, holding each other's hands before we went out there. And, um, and let's not forget that like, we were the first audiences of this show, right? So every time we would, go to the rehearsal or we'd hear something for the first time, we'd just say, oh my God, I love this song. I love this performance of this song. Please, please let something happen with this show. And we we're about to go give this to the world for the very first time. We we're holding hands. And I remember Karen looking down and going, man, they ain't ready. She was, and, and that of course became like a little key uh, phrase for all of us, um, especially at Saturday night on Broadway, which was, they ain't ready. And I don't think they were. Um, but it was such a joy to be able to give that to the world for the first time. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I miss you guys. <laughs> I miss you too. I miss you too. And um, we had um, we had such special times together, not only um, on stage, of course, and admiring each other's talent, but there's been such a foundation of sisterhood and love and support um, between the four of us, and of course, Eliseo. And um, uh, and so I think about, there was a time we all went to Atlantic City <laughs> together <laughs> for a little for a little girls weekend artist retreat. You remember, we sat in the spas and we talked about all this stuff going on in our lives and all these creative dreams that we had. And it's just been an incredible thing to have um, a group of such strong, talented, gorgeous women to know that we can always I think lean on each other and 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 we say always don't forget the plus one look right one um but that we've always been able to lean on each other in fact there i don't think there's been an opening night among the core four plus one where there hasn't been a delivery uh from the group to each and every one of us since which is saying a lot you know and again it's not it's not really about flowers it's about it's about just knowing your people are standing around you and you're my people and i love you Good and bad, so. Oh yeah. Good and bad, all of it. Oh yeah, I mean, it's you know it's easy to be a fair weather friend. We we've, we've all stood in in a lot for each other, and so I also think about. <laughs> do you remember backstage? Janet had ordered a very spiritually oriented game. <laughs> this is a board game that she bought at a place called Cafe Gratitude. Am I right? Am I getting right. it in LA? Mm -hmm. And it was called the Abounding River. River. <laughs> okay, so the Abounding River was a board game that was essentially, you know, I guess a personal growth. It sounds like a nightmare, but it was actually <laughs> <laughs> it was actually really beautiful to look at. Yeah, and, uh, and it just you unfortunately you roll the dice, you pick a card, you got asked a deep question and um, you know about where you are in your life where you're going what's happening um and we played that game the four of us a lot and, and then I, then you pull the card that says you have to laugh for a minute straight remember that that was the worst yeah which was so think, hard to do so hard i think i always preferred like you know share your deepest fear than let's oh, just 
sit here and laugh over nothing for a minute straight. But we spent a lot of time working on that. Yeah, I'm fairly Sarah remembers that too. Remember the first time he, he played it? He would. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, it's so exciting. We have one viewer tonight, Eliseo Roman. Right, We're yeah. so sure. delighted to have him with us. Um, <laughs> yeah. he's be commenting. He the game. I, I, I might as well be on, Ellie. Um, so anyway, uh, he remembers the game. We also had Seder dinners um, yeah. for the of the Jewish persuasion. We had Seder dinners, and Janet and I shared a dressing room, which was called, which was known to the company as the sanctuary because yeah. a lot of people like to just come in and chill out and the pillows yeah so we had these uh we had these pillows that we had set up uh on a wall of the dressing room and uh, that was a place where people would just come and sit in the pillows and we had this wonderful dresser named Jamie <laughs> Jamie <laughs> Miss Jamie so, you know, she would see the traffic coming in and out of the room and she just, you know, she clocked everything and had the best one liners, which one day she came in and she's doing Andrea's wig and she says, uh, you know how it goes. Janet holds them while Andrea, what was it? Nope. They, yeah, they come in, they cry, Janet holds them and Andrea talks them through it. That's right. <laughs> That's pretty much how it went down backstage at In the Heights. That was um, the same sacred little space for us. Yes, but I think we were embarrassed because we were in Jamie's workspace. We said, I'm sorry, people are always here. She goes, oh no, I know how it is. They come in, they cry, Janet holds them, Andrea talks them through it. <laughs> I remember leaving the show and I still went back there. I was in another show altogether and I went and cried in the pillows. That's right, with your ankle. That's right, my darling. That's right, sanctuary time. Well, and now we create the sanctuary wherever. Oh, but um, before I get to this this wonderful question, any funny memories of people breaking character? So let's think about that. Um, I just want to do the full circle with the pillows. So what ended up happening with the pillows, Jay? So uh, the pillows are kind of floating around for a while. Uh, and when I went to do Wonderland, I had talked to my dresser who actually ended up being, not, uh, not my dresser, but, uh, our costume wardrobe supervisor who ended up moving to Hamilton to be their wardrobe supervisor. But I told him the story about the pillows and he's like, will you bring in the pillows? So I brought in the pillows and he refurbished all of the pillows in these beautiful designs. And they lived in my dressing room at the marquee while I was doing Wonderland, which is really special. And I still have the pillows. Right, and that, made, that became the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. then, uh, yes. So whoever's got the pillow in the Midtown office. So actually, when we come back, Karen, you should have the pillows. That's right. Well, oh, that's right. That's right. I'm in the Midtown office. Oh, man. But what we do? Well, we, we, we've, I know, we've had it. We've, I, I've, I've already cried in, in Karen's dressing room in Moulin Rouge. We've all cried. Wait, didn't we find out about Mandy being pregnant in your dressing room, Janet? Is that right? Yes, I think that's true. I oh, think that's true. That's a good memory. I don't remember. I didn't. I had forgotten about that. I remember we were gonna have. Or was it your? You both played the marquee. Yes. yes. I remember we were all meeting in at the marquee in someone's dressing room. It had to be you or you, and we were gonna have lunch. And I remember we ordered food, and I knew something was weird when Mandy only got a ginger ale, and I was like, "Wait, oh, yes. I was like, the beast is not gonna eat." I was like, what's wrong? And then that's where she told us that she, she was having a baby. Look, was how, Marib, how old is Maribel now? Maribel is eight. Eight. Going on nine, I believe. So it had to be you, Janet. Because I was there 2012. I don't do math, so. It, it was you. It was in your dressing room, for sure. OK, so Kevin had asked about any funny memories of breaking character on stage. What do we got? Oh. You got one. Wait, I'm going to wait because I didn't want to tell this story. No, tell it. I don't want to tell it. I'm going to make Karen tell it. Why? Because there was an incident with you and me in the salon off Broadway involving a chair. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Is it when you dropped your tweezers? No. What was that? Was that connected to the big... 
what's this? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I blocked it out, and now I bring it up. So what's that about? But anyway, um, you can't see me. I can't tell it. Okay, there's. I don't even know how it started, but we came out for the salon was in this little hamster cage of a you know section of the set. But for ninety six thousand, we had to actually come out downstage, and so we brought one of the Rolly's pink salon chairs downstage to. Mm -hmm play our scene in 96,000 music. And can I, I just say a disclaimer? Those chairs were really difficult to manage. <laughs> okay. Just gonna say, okay, continue. Well, the thing is, I, it kind of goes black for me at this point. <laughs> I don't know what the events were leading up to the moment I suddenly was no longer <laughs> Uh, in the order physically that I had come out. Um, I was I, sitting, what happened? I put you in the chair. I was sitting on the chair first. Is that what happened? Yes. And she, and you know, Karen Olivo is a very strong <laughs> lady inside and out, but out, she is very strong. And so she had her hands on the back of the chair that I was perched in. But she had both, she was responsible for both chairs. Oh, because after the scene was over, she had to pull them out? Oh, yes. Right. So she, you just sort of muscled up, and the thing was over. We had done our little, then a brand new lease, right? Y'all are freaks. And then you went and grabbed those chairs, and you grabbed them so hard that I went upside down. And as I think as Lynn tells it, all I saw were two little turquoise heels, like flying in the air. Yes. And I was just like face down on the, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember any of it. I, I just I, were trying to get up so damn fast. I think I left you there too. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, so you just, like, as long as the chairs are okay, you were like, I got those chairs. I had to get no. the chairs up in time. No, it was, on our own. it was the scene change. I had to do the scene change. Exactly. Exactly. And that's folks why there's actors equity. Um, <laughs> I'm mortified. You 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 remember back to equity, not IOTSI? Was it about the scene change? It was about your fellow actor, my friend. Um, no, it was hilarious and we laughed for days after that. But I it was really tough actually coming back to the show. We were backstage. I don't know what happens right after that. It's the rest of 96,000. And we were just we were a wreck. It was a really, really hard. <laughs> I just remember. Was it Lynn or Mady? Says all they saw, all they saw was shoes. Yeah, no. Heels in the air. I really blocked that out because <laughs> <laughs> because I I know I felt I was mortified. I know I felt really bad about that. I was okay. I, I was talking about the tweezers. Yeah, what is the tweezers story? You don't remember in No Me Diga, you had these tweezers, and like you were like it was it was so weird. I, it felt weird, like the blocking for you, because you were like above her, but you needed to kind of be on the side and you were trying to like do the like, right from behind her, right? Yeah. And you dropped the tweezers and yeah. I, in the shortest skirt that's ever been made, I thought, great, Karen, you go down on all fours and get the tweezers. <laughs> and I was like underneath Ooh. the tweezers. <laughs> getting the tweezers and I then I missed my line because I was like just butt up in the air trying to hunt for tweezers for you. Right, the tallest lady in the world on all fours trying to find my prop. And you afterwards you're very concerned about props and sets. Um. <laughs> you were mad though. Do you remember you were like, don't you ever, you were like, you had the next line. Yeah, it was like, because you completely, threw yourself up with a grenade. You're like, oh no, it's really important. I'm not in the scene anymore. It's really important that Andrea get her tweezers. Bye, you know? <laughs> that was like, you are a crucial part of this scene. Tweezers are no tweezers. You need to be in the scene. I don't care about the tweezers. Tweezers are this big, go like this. No one knows we don't have the tweezers, but yes. So I hope that was, I don't know, that may have been satisfying or not at all, Kevin, but that's what we got. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Another uh, beautiful story. I Oh, well, first of all, actually, I have a little clip of Norma that you got to show. Um, and this is from, listen, we all knew it was special and we all knew we were thrilled to be a part of it. But even, even doing it, even after winning the Tony, I don't know that we knew until five years later when we did the five-year five year reunion concert at uh, United Palace Uptown in Washington Heights for people who had been listening to the show now for a few years. And um, I think we have a little clip of No Me Diga there. Um, <laughs> memories happy 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 ones why was i in a tutu you, you look so cute yes and you were in a tutu and combat boots you were giving signature signature vanessa um what what are your impressions of that night i don't know it was just so overwhelming you know the the whole thing was so overwhelming because we were singing this music again for the first time in a long time, right? And there were people who were singing who were who were not in the original cast. We had cast people, cast members who came in afterwards. And then it, it, there were so many people in that theater. Everybody knew all the lyrics to every song. And I think just for us to be together again, revisiting the experience was, it was so overwhelmingly beautiful. It also felt like I, it always, well, maybe for me, because I had, I left before, like, I felt like I was done, but like, I feel like a lot of people wanted to see In the Heights and then they weren't able to see In the Heights. And so that reunion concert sort of, it fulfilled things for those people who were like, no, I've heard of it. I've listened to the soundtrack, but I never got to see them all. And I'm actually getting to see them all now. Um, or at least most of them. And I remember that feeling of like, there were hungry people out there, you know? And also like you could hear people singing with you more than one person. It was like being the Beatles. It was just like, it was an unreal experience out there. And I remember the, it started late and there was like a line around the theater and Lynn actually went running out to typical Lynn to like entertain everybody outside as they were waiting to come into the theater. Um, also another thing that was incredible was what had happened to people since. So there were members of our ensemble and in the Heights at that point when we were setting up the, like the risers for the performance that like already, you know, had their careers had already taken a leap. And so they were like, principals sit in the front row. And I remember saying, TV stars in the back, please. <laughs> Both Joshua Henry and Krista Rodriguez had TV shows and they were in the ensemble and understudies uh, during In the Heights. So it was really magical to see how everybody, everybody in the company, so many amazing things had happened. We just had Gabrielle Ruiz on, uh, uh, mm -hmm. about last week and you know of course she's had such success on television too and it's beautiful to see what has happened we knew I mean that's the other thing the way we knew about Lynn that he was magical before anyone else knew we also knew a lot about these performers that maybe weren't front and center in the heights that we knew were extraordinary like Joshua Henry and and Krista and so many more yeah we have a question why do you think each of your characters what do you think each of your characters would be doing with their lives today Ooh, that's good. Well, the salon is still going strong for sure. Um, you know, Daniela had to pack it up, but she's a survivor. So I, you know, she went to wherever she needed to go next. You know, I mean, it's probably like Rigo Park or somewhere by the airport at this point. But, um, you know, and I, I don't know. Do you think Carla came with her? Please say yes. Of course. Where else would she go? But I think Carla's married and has kids and is like head of the youth pastor group at the church. 
Yes. And Daniela gave her full maternity leave, anything she wants, but it's pretty much mean to everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Vanessa's obviously married to Snobby and she's like in business school somewhere, you know, like somewhere in New York. Love it. Love it. And now we have the movie coming out. So we'll see a whole new version, a whole new reimagining of what those characters and those journeys are going to be. So that's very exciting. Um, so another um, thing that I wanted to share with you guys, hold on. Oh yeah, is uh, recently, or I, that I wanted to share with you. P.S. I texted you like yesterday about it. <laughs> um, there, when we talk about not knowing what the impact that it would have um, and how many people would be moved by it. Obviously we live in a totally different world now with social media and the internet and the incredible fan art that happens that comes out of um, shows. And so uh, I saw something on, in, on Instagram the other day that was created by um, a animator. Okay. And um, I want to shout her out and give her and give her her name is Ivy. But I want to give Ivy Turbide. Okay. And she goes by Ivy.Saurus.Rex. And Ivy Turbide created this unbelievable animation of Carnaval del Barrio. And um, she said, she posted, she was so excited about it. She says, it took me a year and a half to make this. Um, and now I'm so proud to finally be posting it. And of course, I was so moved by what she did, but I also loved, she knows either, I, I think she's young, maybe not, you know, maybe didn't see us live, but has certainly seen enough, I don't know, boot, bootleg copies of the show to know exactly us and our expressions. And um, she, and then she did the whole number also while putting her little point of view um, in very witty ways into it. So if you want to go to YouTube and just look at Carnaval del Barrio um, animation, but I have a little hilarious moment of it to show you today. That is that I just I just love what she did with it. Of the Everything changes today. Hey! Snobby's on his way hey! up to a better place. Hey! Look at Vanessa's face. Hey! <laughs> so I'm obsessed. Can we can we pull that back up? Okay. Okay. I mean, how fan? Come on. How fabulous is that? So, shout out to the brilliant Ivy Turbide for doing this, and uh, and I just I loved that the way she was just so witty in, in her capture of us. And um, you have to really check out. I would have loved to have played it for you, but it's like seven minutes. So go to YouTube and, and check her out, or check out her Insta Ivy .saurus .rex. Um, What else, ladies? Anything else you wanna? Oh wait, I brought something to show you guys. I was looking. I don't know if this. I don't know if you can see this. Do you remember these? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. I have so, got those. So talk about those. So there was someone in the band, right? Doug. 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 He had a whiteboard, and so he would sort of do these little cartoons, and it would be you'd have to go underneath the stage to see them, right? Yeah. And so every single night there'd be like a new one. And this is Vanessa, uh, this is Nina crying over the C that she got in gym and Vanessa being like, whatever, dude, I got an F. <laughs> right, because when he wasn't playing, he would make these cartoons of alternate scenarios in the characters' lives. Yeah. So good. I found that the other day. I don't know where, I don't, I don't know how I had that. So oh, good. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. My what next is that? Hold on. Yeah. We're in um, Karen's amazing little craft space. For those of you who don't know, she's actually a fabulous visual artist in all mediums because she's not talented enough. Um, and she has her little crafty workshop back there, which looks like Brene Brown's workshop. Aww. Aww. So this is a picture, hold it up a little closer to the camera and see if you can explain what's going on here. So that is our sits probe mm -hmm. for off Broadway, isn't it? Off -Broadway. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's us doing, I'm, I'm gonna assume that's No Me Diga, right? Or no, maybe that's the beginning of? It could be the beginning of 96,000. It could be 96, the beginning 000. of 
Yeah. That's 96,000. That's just so, not, tell them about that little book. Oh yeah. So I think, who, I don't know who gave Our producers book. gave that. Us that. Producers? Yeah. So there's like these little, like all these tiny, like little old school. Incredible photos. photos. Yeah, these photos were taken by Josh Lehrer, who is Jeffrey Lesser's husband, our producer's husband. And um, he he just did these gorgeous captures throughout the whole process. Yeah, that's the best. That's, that's the one one. ever. And I actually, yeah, I think we showed it on the show a couple of weeks ago of like the moment. That was the moment in the Sits Probe where Alex Lacamoire, our incredible orchestrator, had he had just built the whole thing and was playing it with the band for the first time for all of us. And the it was the climax of ninety six thousand, and just he he and Lynn jumping for joy captured in that picture. But that encapsulates the whole experience. When you say like, if you saw any of any of us jumping for joy at any moment, that was in the heights. Yeah, the thing that's cool about that picture too is that you see the two of them like in the middle. Like we're obviously we're still singing, but he was playing the piano and jumped up from the piano and ran to like high five. Lynn in the middle of like the huge cacophony <laughs> like that's what like you know as the musician he was like no I gotta go give my voice some props like we're doing it yes like, that's, yeah that moment is all of it right there unforgettable yeah and so yes and obviously that was a relationship that worked out Alex and Lynn. <laughs> yeah obviously everyone is enjoying their the fruit <laughs> Their collaboration with Hamilton on Disney Plus, and um, and you, my darling, went from I was going to say just one one Lynn show to another. But what I meant about that is like you were there at the very big beginning, and then you were there when he was esta already established as kind. Of, actually, because you you did it, the Chicago company, he was already quite established as the beginnings of a global superstar. So, yeah. what was that like? Um, in that experience, having been with him at the very beginning? Well, I mean, we were at, we huh? were at Hamilton opening night together, weren't we? I saw you guys on the staircase. Yes, yes. And, yeah. yes. I remember being like, oh my God, I'm so excited that I'm getting to see this and that I get to be a fan. And then when it rolled around and I got to be a part of it, I was like, oh, and now I get to see it. Like, I get to be the fan who gets to see how the sausage is made. Like, right. that's pretty cool. Um, it, I don't know. It, it didn't change much for me, truthfully. He's did it feel? Did it feel just like going back into just going back to the team we know and love, and just like, ooh, you yeah. know? Yeah, everyone still made fun of me. Uh, it was like, like no time had passed. No time had passed whatsoever. You know? Yeah. It, I I don't know. I, we get older, but I it doesn't things don't. Some things just don't change. That's true. That's true. I can totally see that. And yeah. and we we what we built in Heights, we sort of have kept, we've managed to keep. I mean, there are those of us who keep in closer touch, like us. But then the, if there are cast members of Heights that I haven't spoken to a, in a long time, they're still they're still family to me. My son, who is six one now, if he sees them on the street, he will go running to them like he is five years old, um, like he was. Right, and he'll throw his arms around. He actually, that's how I can tell. It's like, my son only hugs in the Heights people like this way. Like he's a giant, but he'll come in under for the hug. He'll come in under this way. Cause he's just used to being a little kid around around those, you know, those wonderful people. You were all such angels, frankly, in his life. It was incredible. And and uh, we took it all the way when you, um, the night you won your Tony Award, we were with you getting you ready in the hotel room. You remember that? That's right. You guys were there for that. Yeah, you, it's yeah. You guys are everywhere. You're always there. It doesn't we're matter. Lucky. We're very lucky. Yeah, so, um, I know. Um, I'm going to check real quick to see if we have some donations. So this is a little reminder, guys. If you haven't donated, please give please. us the money. Give us the money. Okay. Um, Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to, Karen, I'm going to send them to you. Okay. To read. We do have donations. Very exciting. Thank you. I'm sending them. Talk amongst yourselves, kids. Hold on. I'm sending them. Mm. Great job. Okay, anyway, I'm back. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> okay, you should be getting it. I think I put it on the group text that we have, so sorry about that. So now maybe <laughs> everyone's getting them. Maybe Eliseo will come on and actually read the donations because- Could you imagine you text them? Uh-huh. Yes, I just texted them on the group thread, Karen. Did you get them? Anyway, for those of you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, hit it. Uh, Catherine from New York, thank you so much for your donation. Yay, Catherine! Alan and Michelle from New Jersey, thank you. Melissa from New York, um, and Carla, in honor of the In the Heights Salon ladies. Oh, I love that. Thank you, thank you so much. Carla, muchas gracias. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys. You really have made a difference. Thank you for being such superheroes and, and you know, just helping helping the people who have lifted you up in other times. Thank you for lifting them up. You're making such a difference. So thank you. Thank you for your donations. Um, all right. So I'm about to wrap this up, ladies. But um, any any last, last parting thoughts about our time together backstage at Heights or even something that you want to share about the friendship that has lasted beyond. I mean, I'm just so grateful for each of you individually and who you are to me in my lives and who we are to each other collectively. I, it's, it's, I feel like we're connected in ways that are so beyond, you know, like what's normal and to have three other women and our plus one, uh, as sort of pillars in my life. I know it's, I'm just so in incredibly grateful. I feel so lucky. Yeah. Also different too. Like that's what's cool. Like our unifying thing is that we created this piece of art and we were, you know, and now we sort of live on in that, but we're so different. Um, we may be performers, but like we, yeah, we're good. We're a good match for each other. Because I feel like I know that if I have a question about this, I know exactly which one of you to go to. You know? Exactly. And that is like a really good safety net to have. And people who will hold you accountable. I know if I need to be like shaken, I'm like, Ellie, give me <laughs> yell at me. Tell me that I'm doing the wrong thing. And I'll be like, all right, here we go. All in love. Yes, always. Yeah, um, that's pretty special because usually you find, I mean, I, I, yeah, that doesn't happen very often. And I think there's something about this show that sort of bonded us in that way um, and made it so that we can trust each other and know that we will always have each other's backs. And um, yeah, that is incredibly special. And it also like, it's great, but the show also ruined it a little bit because no other show will ever be that show. Do you know what I mean? Yes, but I don't think that's ruining anything. I think you know what I mean? like, it can be that show. I mean, you have such specifically beautiful memories of that time. I wouldn't want to pale them by having others to compare them exactly to in the same way. No way. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, I think you hit it on the head. We're all so different, but we're so deeply connected and mean so much to each other. And I want to thank you for coming out tonight for Stars in the House. You know, I love you so much. And of course, you know, these girls I can just pick up anytime and be like, hey, what are you doing? So the fact that they were like, okay, we'll go online and we'll talk with you live <laughs> in front of people too. Um, uh, Eliseo, one, our one viewer, Eliseo Roman tonight. This was a wonderful night. I love you, familia. Eliseo, we love you. We love you more than anything. Um, and yes, thank you for watching. And our hearts are with you. And and you'll be back. We're going to have to have Ellie on. And we have to have Ellie sing because there's nothing better than Eliseo Roman singing um, on the show. But um, again, love you all. Thank you for being with me. You're my hermanas para siempre. So. Para siempre. You got it. Are they amazing or what? This is the reason that um, I keep these ladies in my lives. And I hope 
that you've had a wonderful time tonight, as I always have a wonderful time when I'm with them. Um, don't forget, tonight was Saturday night, Saturday night on Broadway, but I will be back on Monday night for a really special show. Um, set your alarms, because in 48 hours, I'm back. Andrea Mondays. There's going to be a celebration all day long on Monday, July 13th on my Instagram. So check that out at the Andrea Burns on Instagram, which is going to culminate in a really exciting episode. So tune in Monday night. You don't want to miss it. And I don't want to miss you. So don't go anywhere. Stay with me forever. Or as we say in the barrio, no te vayas si me dejas. Si te alejas de mí, seguirás en mis recuerdos para siempre, para siempre, para siempre. Good night.